So we are going to get started. So I'm going to invite our primary as guidance counselor, Reverend Wells, to say a word of prayer for us as we begin. Thank you very much. As we now pause for a word of prayer. Father God, we've come to honor you and to say thank you for all that you've done for us as individuals and then collectively as a Queens College family. God, we want to say thank you for protecting us. We want to say thank you, God, for looking after us when we were incapable of looking after ourselves because we were resting or by chance doing things that we needed to do in order to move our lives forward. But yet, God, you looked after us. And for that, we say thank you. Father God, we ask that you would continue to strengthen us and continue to guide us away from hurt, away from harm, and away from danger. Father God, we ask that you would undergird our families in the name of Jesus that would have lost loved ones, oh God, by way of this pestilence. God, we ask for your strength. We ask for your wisdom. We ask for your knowledge. And we ask for your understanding. We ask, oh God, for your guidance. We know that you are God. And besides you, we recognize none other. Continue, oh God to abide with us as we continue to seek your face, as we continue to do your will. Father, we ask your presence with us as we move into this session. We ask for clarity in the name of Jesus. We ask for understanding so as to be able to move forward in educating our children. And so God, as we cover the parents, we cover all of our children, we cover our administrators in the name of Jesus, we cover the entire Queens College family. And we ask, oh God, that you will continue to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or even think. We ask, oh God, that your divine will be done in our lives and ours be done away with. We want to honor you and we want to show our appreciation for all that you've done. We know, oh God, that you're a keeper and he that keepeth Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Thank you for all that you've done, for what you're doing right now and for what you're going to continue to do. I declare blessings upon us as individuals and collectively as one body. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Wells, for blessing us this evening. I'm now going to invite our vice principal, the head of primary years, Mrs. Sylvia Benneby, to bring remarks. Welcome remarks, Mrs. Benneby. Thank you, Mrs. Hutchison Dean and Reverend Wells. Thank you very much for that prayer. Good evening, parents and family members. And first of all, I wanna just thank you for your participation, your partnership, and your sacrifice of time this evening. We, the educators, cannot do what we do without your help and support. And as a result, we, we find it necessary to meet with you as we watch and help and, um, observe your children develop in the Google G Suite um, learning management system. First of all, let me say I applaud the students, the ones from grade three to grade six, for the fantastic job that they have done thus far in managing and navigating the Google Learning Management System. However, parents, what we expect from the students and what we need them to do, we need you to be aware and we need you to be informed, and hence this webinar this evening. So as schooling changes and we continue to learn, the students are learning, we, it's, the onus is on us to provide you with the information as well so that we are all working together. And so we want to thank Mrs. Hutchison Dean for all she does to support the teachers at school, the students at school, and in turn the children as well. So parents, please take all you can from this webinar tonight. Like Mrs. Hutchison Dean has said, if you have questions about 
specifically this webinar is specifically about the Google Learning Management System. So before Mrs. Hutchison Dean comes to educate all of us again on the system, I'm going to ask Reverend Henry Nose to come and just give you brief greetings, and then we all would sit back, relax, and learn again, or relearn, and some of you, it's for the first time, the management system, so we can better support and guide the students. So Reverend Nose, and then Mrs. Hutchison Dean. Thank you, Mrs. Barnaby, and um, thank you, panelists, and thank you, parents, for joining us this evening. Uh, we're glad that you are part of this. We're glad that um, you are a part of us, uh, even at Queens College. We appreciate your presence as we continue to um, undergird our students um, with the knowledge and um, with the information that they need to become great citizens. I'm remember. I'm reminded in Ecclesiastes chapter four that talks about two are better than one because they find good return for their labor. And it goes on and it says that when either of them falls, one person is there to help pick them up. But pity the person who is on their own because when they fall down, there's no one to help them. And a later verse goes on to say that a threefold strand is not easily broken. And meaning to say the more of us who are together, we intertwine with each other and we become the threads of strength. And so this evening is a amalgamation of the strands that come together to make us strong. We have the school, we have our students, we have you as parents, and we have the technology. And these and the other aspects of Queens College and even you as parents will come together to create a strong grounding, a strong foothold for our young people. So um, participate well today, take notes, make any um, note of any questions that you may have that you can forward on and we will answer, but we're just happy to have you here. May God continue to bless you. Thank you, Mrs. Banaby, and thank you, Reverend Knowles, for bringing greetings. Now we're going to get into our webinar, um, which is based upon our major learning platform, which is Google Workspace for Education, and it was formerly called G Suite for Education. So those, of our, those parents who are returning, you may be familiar with G Suite for Education. It just has a new name now, Google Workspace for education. So as I go along, please, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat or the question and answer area. And the tech mentors will try to assist, but they don't um, answer, I will then answer um, for you. So I'm gonna share my screen. And for those of you, this is it. This is gonna be recorded and it will be placed on our YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed to our Queens College YouTube channel, please subscribe um, because anytime a video is placed up there, so it could be from different sections of the school, um, you will be notified as to what is, placed, what is placed there. So this is going to be recorded and placed on the YouTube channel as well as there will be a link on our school's website for you to review it. Okay, so just quickly, I want to go over some of the key points that I will be discussing this evening. What is Google Workspace for Education? Our core learning tools here at Queens College, especially in the primary years. What is a Google student account for those parents and students who are new to Queens College? Recommended devices. We would have sent out information about this in the summertime. Accessing your child's Google account. So how do you go about that? And then our bring your own device program. And then we have a special note about digital citizenship at the end. So as I was introduced, my name is Mrs. Zena Hutchison Dean. I've been employed with Queens College for six years. Now I am the academic technology coordinator, a role that I've been in for, this is my second year in this role. And a lot of parents, I have had the opportunity to interact with you, whether it's helping you with navigating some technical issue, resetting a password, helping you get on board, um, Yes, so that is me. So my role here at Queens College is to help all sections of the school with guiding them on effective technology practices. I manage our learning management platform, which is the Google platform. And I help with our related systems as well. I lead professional development for our teachers, for our administrators. And I also lead education sessions like, like these for our parents and students. 
Okay, so let's get right into it. What is Google Workspace for Education? This is a free online suite of programs that Google has created for schools and universities. Most of you will be familiar with Gmail already, but Google has its own platform just especially for schools and universities where it restricts certain things to ensure that the platform is safe for teachers and students to use and administrators. Okay, what is the beauty of Google? The beauty of Google is that all of the apps can be accessed through a web browser. Students can access their work in the cloud as long as they have internet access. So those are two big advantages of us using this platform. Some other advantages for our students is the fact that they have 24 seven access to the platform. So as long as they have internet access, they can hop on their computer at any given time and check their inbox, check their Google Classrooms. It allows for us to do real-time collaboration um, with our students and teach them about collaboration online as well. They have one single sign-in. So when they log in one time, they're logged into all of the applications that our platform has to offer. Students do not have to worry about saving. The platform automatically saves for them. So that is a plus, especially for our younger learners in grades three and grade four. Google can be used on any device, okay? Although it works best when we talk about with the web browser using Google Chrome, all right? So it can be used on any type of laptop, personal computer type device, all right? It allows us as a school to do real-time measurement of student performance. So teachers are able to just see at a glance, especially if, they're, if students are working on a particular activity within Google Classroom, they're able to jump in, help the student um, and see what it is that they're doing. Decrease paper usage. So as we are in the digital world now, um, it has allowed us to use more technology for learning, okay? Differentiated and personalized learning, Google Classroom allows teachers to push out assignments to students based on ability levels. All right, so that's one of the pluses. And then again, instant feedback. We have chat, we have messaging, we have video conferencing as well available within the platform. So that is a plus. Okay, which Google apps are used at Queens College? So for those persons who are new to Queens College, I'm just gonna briefly go over some of the main apps that we use with Google. Google Classroom, this is our learning management system, the core of what we do. It has been a real godsend to us during um, the initial part of the pandemic and even now, all right? So it allows students to easily receive assignments, be organized um, as to what they're doing. It shows them when assignments are due, it shows them their grades, um, so it's a wonderful portal for work to actually be stored and retrieved and turned in. We have Gmail, um, which we use to communicate with our students. They can send email. They can also access instant messaging from there. They can also look at their schedules from there as well for live lessons. We have Google Calendar, which is one of the core apps that we use here at the school um, for primary year students. It really keeps them organized by letting them know when they have a live lesson and also when assignments are due coming from the various Google Classrooms that they are part of. Okay, Google Drive. Now, Google Drive is a free online storage um, facility that allows our students to create different documents. They can save different documents, download different documents. Um, it's just a free platform, all right? Google Docs. So the next set of apps I'm gonna speak about are similar to some of the programs that are available in Microsoft Office, all right? But they're a little bit more simplistic. So we have Google Docs, which is similar to Microsoft Word, and students can either create and edit documents and collaborate in real time, all right? So that's one of the pluses. Google Slides, which is similar. Sorry, I mixed this one, I'm sorry. This is Google Sheets, okay? Google Sheets allows students to actually create um, slideshows, all right? So it's similar to PowerPoint, um, but all online. Students can even collaborate on a slideshow together. All right, Google Forms. Now, a lot of our teachers push out quizzes, um, our assessments, um, our exams, our baseline assessments happen through Google Forms. So students can easily complete a quiz. They can complete a test, an exam. Um, some parents you would have experienced are sending out surveys through Google Forms as well through our platform. Google Meet. Google Meet is our main video conferencing platform in the primary years. 
Um, and then we have Google Chat Hangouts, which allows for text chats, video calls, screen sharing between um, our teachers and students. Okay, so let's go over our qccomments.com accounts for our students. Okay, how will a student's qccomments.com account appear? Okay, so the qccomments.com account for our students, all right, starts with the first letter of their first name, their last name, and the last four digits of the ID. So how do you know a student's account? It's because it has numbers in it. Okay, our teacher accounts um, have the first letter of their first name and their last name. So all student accounts at QC have their student ID number, which is unique to them. So that's how we're able to differentiate between our students. Okay, so this will be one example of student ID number. Okay, A Smith1234 at QCcomments.com. All right. Okay. So for our new student users, and you would have gotten this information already, those persons who are new to Queens College, but this is just for the replay as well, because we have parents, we have students who come in at different times of the year as well. Anytime we have, you have, we have a new student, you as the parent, you would email their login information, okay? So you would receive a PDF ID card, which has their email address. And then you would also receive a link to a guide that we always give our parents to help them with initially navigating the platform, okay? So this is an example of the login card. It has the student's email address on it. And you would also get access to an e-guide. And the e-guide is also available on the website as well, qchandsforth.com. Okay, so I wanna put a plug in right here. What happens if your child has password issues? Most of our returning parents already know this. You can email password at qccomments.com and we try to respond as quickly as possible for resetting your child's password. All right, and this is also my email address if you have any questions, concerns. Okay, so I'm just going to go over signing into your qccomments.com account um, just for the sake of everybody and also to for new parents whenever they come okay, during the school year. So you would, those parents who are new to the school, you would have been advised to log into a desktop or laptop for the first time of signing in because it makes things a little bit easier. We advocate for our students to use Google Chrome when using the platform because it makes things so much more easier because everything is done through the browser. If you have multiple Google accounts stored on your machine, it's best to sign out Okay, if you feel comfortable adding another account, that's fine, but it's best to sign out and sign in to the student's qccomments.com account. So there's no mix up. Okay, so you would go to Google Chrome, you would go to Gmail, and you would click on the sign in button. Once there, you want to make sure that you correctly enter your child's qccomments.com email address. All right, and that will be provided on your login card that would have been emailed. Okay, the initial password will always be welcome one with a capital W. Okay, and then you press next. Sometimes we want to encourage you, and this is even for other websites um, that your child may be asked to sign up to as well. Students need to have strong passwords um, when they're creating passwords for, for specific websites. So even for their email addresses with guiding them, you don't want it to be anything that someone can easily remember. It shouldn't be their name, their date of birth, their favorite animal, um, things that can be easily guessed. So what we have here are some suggestions. So it should have eight characters, a capital letter, a number, and other symbols in there. And it should be something your child can remember. We've also provided you with this area as well. You can easily print this out or you can annotate over it with your child's password. Okay, and then it's gonna ask you to put in your new password times. And then voila, you've entered your inbox, okay? So we can go from here, move from here. So within your inbox, um, you will receive daily messages. Your child will receive daily messages. So these may be announcements from administrators, from teachers, from classmates, from the school. It's also important that you take note of when live lessons are. 
So our teachers send our calendar invites to our students and they receive that in the form of emails. Teachers also send out Google Classroom. So a lot of our students would have joined Google Classrooms already. Um, some specialists would you know, still be sending out invites to Google Classrooms. And it's important that your child joins each class in order for them to stay connected and also two in order for their grades to be in one particular place for each subject that they are enrolled in. Okay, so like I said before, a student will receive a Google Calendar email invite for each live lesson daily or weekly. So there should be no guessing as to when lessons are taking place because you can look directly on the calendar or in the inbox in a daily, on a daily or weekly basis to find out what is going on. And then again, each student should receive a Google Classroom email invite for each subject that they are part of. So in your spot checking with your child and your reviewing, you want to make sure that, hey, they are part of all the Google Classrooms for all of the subjects that they have. So if you see a subject that is missing, um, please reach out to your child's teacher or the specialist teacher. Okay, so I want to go over how a student can accept a Google Meet video call lesson invite. All right, so Google Meet is our main platform for video conferencing for our less, for our student lessons, live lessons. So the student can receive an email invite for that. They can receive or view the invite on the Google Calendar app, and then they can also view it through a calendar notification. And I'm gonna go over all of these and how they look, okay? So what is Google Meet? All right, so like I said, it's our video conferencing app and it's built into the student's Google Workspace for Education account. So they don't have to go onto another platform um, to do video conferencing, everything is built in. Once they sign into their account, they have access to Google Meet, okay? So here are some steps with accessing Google Meet. Students can click on the waffle button and this is located on almost every app within um, the Google platform, okay? And then they can look for the Meet button. All right, once they go to Google Meet, Google Meet will show you all of the meets that are scheduled for that day or that are coming up, okay? Students have to wait until the teacher has activated the meeting link to join. So if a student sees this meeting link, that means that the teacher has it activated and they can join the meeting link, all right? Another way students can join is through their inbox. So teachers would send out an email invite Okay, it's important that our students click yes to say that they are going, although it automatically shows up on the calendar, it's still good practice, all right? And then the Google Meet join information is also located inside the email, all right? Okay, why is the Google Calendar app important? So I wanna just reinforce this, okay? The Google Calendar app helps to keep our students organized. So from foundation year straight up to high school, it helps to keep our Google, it helps to keep our students organized and especially for primary years, okay? So if at any time you are unsure of where your child should be, um, especially if there have not been any issues, if there are no fee related issues, if they've not been disconnected, everything will show up on their calendar to show them where they should be. So there's no guessing as to where your child should be. Each class that your child is a part of well, I should say each class, so each homeroom. So if we have grade three C, I will do an example, grade three C, four P, five Q. Each class has a group email address. So when the teacher, if it's a child's class teacher or a specialist teacher, when they send out an email invite to the student for the Google Meet lesson, they send it out to that Google, they send it out to that class email address, okay? So the student is automatically included within the email address and it pops up on their calendar. The next thing is for Google Classroom, once an assignment has a due date attached to it, it automatically shows up on the child's calendar as well. So it helps to keep you organized. So if the child is a part of five or six classes on Google Classroom, any assignment with a due date is also gonna show up on the calendar. All right. So calendar app. I just wanna reinforce now, the calendar app can be accessed if you use the waffle button. So that's our core navigation button and you can look for calendar, okay? So on the day of live lesson, 
students can go directly to the calendar. So this is another way now, instead of looking in their inbox, they can go directly to the calendar and they would click on actual meet meeting, right? And it will lead them to it. And I will go in a little bit more detail with that. Another way is that you receive notifications, all right? So once you accept notifications, like how I have the example here, it will say grade 3C math lesson and they can click on it and it would lead them to the invite to go straight to the lesson, all right? So Google does a great job of placing reminders or notifications to help our children with navigating, all right? Okay, so let me just move on. All right, on the day of the lesson, you wanna make sure that your child hits on join with Google Meet, okay? All right, so how do you ensure that your student can successfully access a Google Meet? So these are some, just some typical challenges some parents have sometimes that can talk me about, okay? You wanna make sure that your Google Chrome browser is up to date. This is very important, okay? So your student has access to Google Meet, they don't have, they don't experience too much technical issues. So that is important. The next thing is, right, which is a common occurrence, is that sometimes our students are logged in in the browser. So if you look up top on this um, slide that I have, the first T, some students may be logged in with a personal Gmail address instead of their QC Commerce Gmail address. All right. So this may also prohibit you from getting into the Meet. So you want to make sure both profile pictures match, okay? So if your student's name starts with an A, you wanna see that there's A on the top and A on the bottom and both pictures match, all right? So that is very important, okay? Next thing we want to make our parents aware of, sometimes our, uh, our little comments like to explore, all right? And they want to be sneaky. So on a couple of occurrences, sometimes parents will call and say they don't see any calendar invites on their child's calendar and it's because the child has declined the calendar invite okay so you want to make sure that your child accepts the calendar invite so as you can see on this example there's a red x next to the student's name and the teacher can see this and the teacher can see this if the student um, declines it i can also see if the student declines it and i'm able to easily show or screenshot the parent and say hey the student has hit decline on the calendar event. So the student would have to go back into the calendar and we accept the invite in order for it to show up on the calendar, okay? So we wanna make sure all of our comments are present and accounted for, okay? Student restrictions with Google Meet. So I just want to mention a few things. Google Workspace for Education is a confined platform, okay? Although it is Google-based, it is still confined, all right? Our students, basically interact with persons who have a QC comments or QC henceforth address, all right? Students cannot initiate a Google Meet session on their own. They cannot start a live, live lesson or video conferencing session. So that is some restriction we have um, placed within our Google Workspace environment, okay? Students cannot invite non-Queens College users to Google Meet. Only our teachers can invite persons to Google Meet. So say for instance, if there's a guest speaker, um, who has a Gmail address, they may be invited into the Google Meet, okay? So please, parents, if, you for, if your child forgets his or her email password, it's important for you to reach out, um, you know, because our teachers have been advised to only let students in who have a qccommerce.com address. Although it may be easy, we want to teach our kids the proper way of doing things and to be um, exemplifying good digital citizenship skills as well. So if there's any issue with passwords, please make sure you reach out so your child is using their email address that the school has supplied for them so we can keep a running record of everything that is going on. All right, what does a Google Meet session look like? I wanna go over this quickly so you are aware. All right, when you're first signing into Google Meet, it's gonna ask you to allow for certain things. So allowing your microphone, allowing your camera. So you want to make sure that you press that. Okay, the child teacher may also ask for them to mute the microphone when they're coming into the meet just to be quiet. Okay, here are some basic buttons within the Google Meet. Now, Google does a really good job of updating uh, every couple of weeks or every couple of months. So a lot of things change. So even with this interface, this has changed from last school year 
to this school year, okay? So it's always doing improvements and that's a wonderful thing, okay? So I wanna go over a few buttons in here that are um, important. We have the raise your hand button. So our students don't have to download the extension anymore to raise their hand, it's automatically in here. We have the present now button, which I'm gonna speak a little bit more on. We have more options, which deals with layouts and I'm gonna speak to layouts as well, okay? All right, there's a layout feature that, well, there are multiple layout features that allow our students to view participants within the Google Meet in different views, okay? So if you go to the more options button, you can go to change layout and you have different layouts to choose from. Within the auto and the tile layout, students can increase the number of participants that they see within the Google Meet screen. They can also zoom out if they wish in order to get a better view if it's a large number of participants within the Google Meet. All right, I see that there is a question. Okay, so we will look at that later. All right. How do I share my screen in Google Meet? So this is also good for you to know as a parent too, to be able to assist your child. All right, within the present now button, okay, you have three different ways in which you can share a screen. All right, you have sharing your entire screen, you can share a single window, or you can share a Chrome tab, which is best when the student has a video or some audio to share, okay? When you share your entire screen, it shows everything on your Google Chrome window. So all the tabs that you have open up. All right. So you want to make sure that you have sensible tabs open up uh, that display good digital citizenship skills. Okay. So once your entire screen, the screenshot opens up, you would select it. There will be a blue border around it and the share button becomes active and the student can then share his or her screen with the class. Next way is by sharing a window. So say for instance, the student may have up two Google Chrome windows, browser windows, or they may have up a standalone app, like say for instance, Microsoft Paint or Microsoft Word. They're able to share standalone applications or standalone windows, and it will be the same process as well. Okay, sharing a Chrome tab. The Chrome tab is best when there's a video to share, okay? or when there's audio to share. So it's basically a single tab. So the student would have to have that tab up already. If it's a YouTube video, if it's something that they've saved on their Google Drive, um, if it's something that they're sharing from the classroom, they would have to have that up already in order for Google Meet to recognize the tab and for them to be able to share it. So the, those are three main ways of being able to share within the Google Meet platform. Okay, so now I move on to Google Classroom. What is Google Classroom? All right, I'm going to go over what it is, some of the main features, notifications, assignments, and parent guardian classroom summaries, which are important to you as a parent. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, Google Classroom is our LMS, our learning management system. So this allows for each child to have a classroom for each subject that they are part of. It allows all of our students to keep track of assignments, upload assignments, view feedback from their teacher instantaneously. They can also send private comments on an assignment if they don't understand certain things. The teacher can reply back to them. Um, so it eliminates that fear with asking in the open as well. They can also place a class comment under an assignment as well if they want all of the students to actually see it, okay? The platform also allows our students and teachers to interact with each other in terms of postings, okay? And then it, it's easily used with Google Apps. So all of the Google Apps work seamlessly with Google Classroom, so that is a plus, okay? So how do our students join Google Classroom? For each Google Classroom that they are a part of or that the teacher wants them to be a part of, they would receive an email invite, okay? So this is a sample as to how the email invite looks. There is a big join button when they open up the email. All right, and once they click join, it takes them straight to the classroom, the homepage of the classroom, all right. What are some advantages for students with Google Classroom? Google Classroom is very intuitive. It sends email notifications anytime any change happens in the classroom. 
So if there's a new post in the stream, if there are new assignments, if there's missing work, new grades, if there's a comment made on a child's assignment, all of that is sent by email to our students. If they have apps or if they have the Google Classroom app downloaded on a cell phone, a tablet, it, you can receive app notifications as well, all right? To keep abreast of what is going on inside the classroom. All right, so this is one example of an email notification um, for a new material, which is actually like a resource. Okay, how does it work for students? So in primary years, we have um, we have mandated that our students use either Chromebooks or laptops. All right. In your home, you may have a desktop computer. That is fine. All right. But our students need to access Google Classroom through the Google Classroom. Chrome browser or the Google Chrome app. Secondly, they can also download the Google Classroom app, as I explained earlier, if they have a secondary device like a phone or a tablet um, in order to do certain things outside of class time, okay? How do you access Google Classroom? Again, you can use the waffle button and you can look for the Classroom app. Once they click on the Classroom app, it leads them to the Google Classes homepage. On this home page, it will show all the classes they have joined, and it will also show the classes with join invites. So there will be a join button on that page for them to be able to join it. Okay. I want to go over the three main areas in Google Classroom so you are aware. We have the stream, we have classwork, and we have people. Once a student starts to submit work and the teacher grades it, grades also pop up on here as well grades um, button. Okay, so let's look at the stream, all right? The stream is like the home page for each Google Classroom. Teachers make announcements there. Um, if there are any changes to the Google Meet session, if there's a website that they want them to go to, anytime a new assignment is posted, um, it is posted in the stream, okay? T um, students and teachers can comment under the post uh, for clarification. Um, they can add multimedia options in post, YouTube videos, images, links to um, other files within Google Drive as well. All right, classwork, okay? Classwork is a section where all of the students' assignments are posted. And this is where all of our students should be uploading work. So I want to make a point here. Parents, all of our students should be uploading work to Google Classroom. So whenever your child has an assignment, it is important that they upload the work to the actual assignment, okay? Because when our teachers go to grade, Google Classroom is linked to our major grading system, which is plus portals. So it makes it easier for the exporting of grades. So it's important, please, that you make sure your child uploads their assignments. They're not supposed to be emailing the assignment for a grade. Um, when they upload it, they're able to see that they turned it in. All right, and the teacher also has direct access to the actual assignment. It gives us a running record of what your child is doing. Okay, so where can you view assignments or where, do, where there are different places where students can view assignments? On the Google Classes homepage, in each box or in each um, class box, if there's an assignment that is due, it is shown inside the class box with the due date, okay? So that's one way. There's the view your work option on the classwork page, okay? And when you click view your work, and I think I have that on the next page, yes. When you click view your work or view my work, it shows you all of the assignments from all of the classes that you are a part of. So if you ever wanna get a bird's eye view of how your child is doing, you can allow them to click on view my work. So it shows what has been graded, it shows what is missing, it shows what has been assigned, okay? If it's missing, it means that the student has not turned it in, all right? It could be missing and late. They have not turned it in and it is late. If it's assigned, it means that it is still um, available to complete and they have not really done anything with it yet or haven't turned it in yet, okay? So how do you stay abreast of assignments in Google Classroom? All right, so these are different areas. So we already looked at view my work on the to-do page, in the class stream, in the classwork section, on the class calendar. All of the students' class materials are stored into Google Drive. 
Um, so there's no guessing. So there are multiple, multiple places where the student can find out what is due, okay? All right, the people section. People section shows you the teachers that are part of the class. So don't be alarmed if you go into the class with your child and you see multiple teachers there. All right, so sometimes administrators may be there. I may be there as well. On the class work at all, sorry, on the class mates, it shows you all of the students that are also a part of the classroom too. Okay, I want to go over some key Google Classroom assignment terms that you as a parent need to be aware of. All right, and certain questions I'm gonna answer at the end if our tech mentors are not able to. Okay, so I, cause I see some questions popping up. All right, so some keywords, turn in, all right? Anytime a student is ready to submit an assignment, the turn in button is what needs to be pressed. Once you press turn in, once a student presses turn in, they can't edit that assignment anymore because it's almost as if they've given ownership rights over to the teacher. Once the teacher grades it and returns it back to the student, then the student becomes the owner of the assignment again, okay? So let me show you one way of counteracting turn in. So say for instance, if you already turn in a Google doc with an assignment, you can press the request at edit access button and this sends an email to the teacher to return the assignment back to you, okay? So that is one way of doing it. That may be the long way of doing it. All right, or you can simply have your student go back into the assignment in Google Classroom and they can press unsubmit. When they press unsubmit, it allows them to make any adjustments that they need to make to the assignment again, okay? Next type of button, um, which is related to another type of assignment is the mark is done button, okay? Sometimes teachers may have students complete an activity on a website or they may read a book. Um, it may be something where they don't need to submit anything on Google Classroom. They just need to hit mark is done. So this is when that button will be used. The next button is add or create. Sometimes students are asked to add an attachment, add a Google Doc, add a Google Slideshow to their actual assignment. This is what they would do, add a picture. So they would have to press add or create and they would have to upload the actual file that is needed. Okay, how do I upload assignments? All right, so it's important that as a student, the student goes into the assignment to view the assignment. Okay, so that would be, this is one example. So say for instance, I have a creative writing assignment. All right, and don't mind it saying test ELC, all of these concepts are the same, all right? You have to go into view assignments, all right? Sometimes teachers create worksheets for students and it will appear with the Google Doc image on it, okay, with their name on it, all right? When they click on the actual file, it will lead them to the Google Doc, all right? And they can make the different adjustments. So say, for instance, I may have a picture I want to insert here, okay? I can easily go to insert, all right? I can go to image and there's a camera option. So I can easily take a picture and it will automatically insert it within the Google Doc for me and then I can press the turn in button, okay? And then it just asks you to confirm, all right? Again, if you make a mistake, if the student makes a mistake, they can easily hit on submit. And then when they're ready to turn in the assignment, they press turn in once again. All right, parent guardian features. So we're getting ready to wrap up. Okay, how you can keep abreast of your child's progress within Google Classroom is that you can sign up for parent guardian summaries. So normally our teachers would send an invite um, to parents via email. If you are a returning parent, you should already be attached to Google Classroom summaries, meaning that if you've accepted an invite from a year or two years ago, it doesn't matter what, child, what classroom your child is a part of, as long as the teacher has parent guardian summaries on, you should receive an invitation to accept updates from that classroom, okay? So for our new parents, if you are not receiving Google Classroom summaries, um, please reach out to your classroom teacher or you can send me an email um, to get you sorted out. So what does the parent guardian, the Google Classroom summaries, what does that encompass, all right? 
It allows you to receive either daily or weekly classroom summaries for each class about either missing work, any type of updates the teacher will post, upcoming assignments, all right? The only thing that it doesn't do is that it doesn't show you grades, all right? We will give a date at a later time, well, hopefully soon in the future, as to when grades will be posted on plus portals for you to be able to view and see it, all right? But Google Classroom Summaries just allows you as the parent to keep abreast of assignments and any type of announcements that the teacher will make. It also shows you missing work. If your child has missed um, a bunch of work, it will keep on showing you the work that is missing, okay? It doesn't allow you to sign directly into Google Classroom but it gives you a summary through your personal email account, all right? It's important that you accept the invite from your child's teacher. There are some classrooms that I go into and the invite is still pending from the parent. So it's important that you check your junk mail or spam if you don't see the invite, all right? And we encourage you as a parent to use a personal email address and not really a work um, email address. All right, because sometimes um, sometimes you may not receive it. So we want you to make sure that you use your personal account, okay? So like I said, again, if you don't receive any invites, please email the child's teacher or myself. So this is how the email invite will look for you to accept the parent guardian Google Classroom summary, okay? And this is one example of how it appears when it comes in your inbox, okay? So it gives you the child's name. It tells, shows you the missing work. All right, now sometimes parents have questions on how they can change the settings. So you may have decided that you only wanted to receive weekly emails. Now you change your mind and you want to receive daily emails, okay? So you would just go into any email, Google Classroom summary email, you would scroll down to the bottom under settings and you can change it from weekly to daily. All right, it also works best if you have a Google account as well, but it still will work with any email address. Okay, so I'm gonna speak briefly about um, our Bring Your Own Device program um, that we will be promoting, especially when our kids return to school. So I just want to um, enforce a few things or inform you of a few things, okay? So BYOD with this Bring Your Own Device will allow our students to bring their personal computing devices to school. All right, and by doing this, and our students have been doing this in the past, but it's gonna be on a bigger scale. All right, we want to be able to promote learning through technology. We want to have the healthy balance of paper and pencil with the digital. We want them to be able to practice using various Google programs at school as well, and be able to know how to navigate the web to locate specific websites that teachers may send them to on a regular basis. All right, so how will the program work? Parents will receive information on specific days for students to bring devices. So students shouldn't just up out the blue and bring their device to school. You will receive guidance as to when your child should bring a device to school. Sharing will not occur. So we encourage every child or each child to have their own device and you will receive more information on guidelines, specific guidelines related to this, okay? What technology items will each student need? So we encourage parents during the summertime to either purchase a Chromebook or a laptop for your child. So your child, that's the type of the device that we're expecting for them to bring to school. No tablets, no cell phones, because they need to be able to maneuver and use all of the apps within Google. Also, they will need a pair of headphones as well. And all of these recommendations are posted on our website if you need to go back. So some examples of basic guidelines for BYOD and more um, guidelines will be given before we start, all right? The laptop for the students should be fully charged prior to coming to school, all right? Um, we don't have 30 plus outlets in the classroom for everybody to be charging their device. So we are encouraging you to have your child's laptop charged before, they're coming, before they come to school. They won't be using it all day. It will be for specific subjects. We want to make sure that the student's laptop can fit inside their backpack or they may have a protective bag that it fits in, okay? Laptops and headphones should be clearly labeled. So there should be labels on all of these different, um, your laptop device and the pair of headphones, all right? Students should be signed into the school account on the laptop so we don't waste time trying to figure out what's the password, things of that nature, all right? 
If there's a laptop pin, your child should know the laptop pin offhand. Again, we don't want to waste time, instructional time, with having to help the child with guessing what their password is. All right, again, laptops will only be used during instructional times and not for free play, all right? We are also requesting that students bring the same laptop to school each time. This helps with them getting acclimated to using the laptop for instruction, okay? And like I said before, detailed guidelines will be shared closer to the start date of the program. All right, so as we close, and I'm gonna ask Reverend Noel to speak a little bit after I speak, just a little note on digital citizenship for our primary years. Parents, um, parents, we want to encourage you we are doing our part as educators, as a school in this relationship triangle, all right? We're trying to help our students and mold them into um, good digital citizens. So what I mean by good digital citizens, they know how to explore the internet safely. They are aware of things that they are doing online um, in a safe manner. They understand that their digital footprint or what is their digital footprint? That everything that they do on the internet is being tracked. Everything that they do within our Queens College platform is being tracked. It has a footprint. So we want to make sure that if you allow your child to use a cell phone, a tablet, that you are monitoring what they're doing on those devices, that you are monitoring the social media sites that your child is a part of. There are some age guidelines or age restrictions for a lot of the social media sites. Some of our third graders, our fourth graders, some of them are a part of these social media sites. So if you allow your child to be a part of it, please ensure that they're doing things that are uplifting themselves um, and that are not putting them in stranger danger situations as well. So make sure you are monitoring what's happening inside their inbox. It's your right to say, hey, come and bring me your phone. Let me check to see what's going on with WhatsApp for you. Let me check to see what's going on on Instagram and TikTok. All right, you need to have these conversations or we encourage you to have these conversations with your children about being safe on the internet, not talking to strangers, um, not posting videos, um, you know, that may be embarrassing or bring them shame because sometimes too our kids, you know, they want to show off their skills, they want some attention as well, but they, we don't want them to be garnering the wrong set of attention. Okay, so I just want to put that plug in there. Um, you know, so please um, speak with your kids, our primary year students, about being safe online um, because it's important and there are a lot of dangers out there as well. And we want all of them, um, all of them to be safe. So I'm going to turn it over to Reverend Knowles and then I will come back um, if we have any questions regarding what I've um, spoken about um, with, Google, with the Google platform. Reverend Knowles. Okay, thank you very much, Mrs. Dane. Um, you hit the nail right on the head what I wanted to share about digital citizenship. Um, we really want to stress to parents that while technology is good, everything can also be used and abused for bad as well. So we want to encourage you that even though we are um, hybrid or, uh, or virtual at this time, we will provide you with additional updates this week from the school. Uh, but in terms of computer usage and technology usage, to don't let your guard drop. The same way that you would not allow your children to interact with strangers out in the public, coming by the house, um, is the same way you need to monitor them online. We, um, it has been brought to our attention um, at certain grade levels, certain students are participating in things online that um, are not really what young persons should be doing. They feel as though it's it's all for fun, but like um, Mrs. Dane mentioned, you they can make themselves um, exposed to predators and persons who want to um, kind of thrive off the innocence of youthhood. And so we remind our students not only that um, what you do is being tracked somewhere around the world, whatever you put up, there's a record, and it can come back to haunt you five years, 10 years down the line, um, but also in a way that you represent your family, you represent your school. And also if persons find themselves, like our school rules do cover certain activities that are off campus, and if they are activity um, off campus events, 
and activities that students are participating in that bring a discredit to the school per se, they may be held accountable. But the most important thing for us is to um, be careful, be mindful, watch what your kids are doing. It seems as though they may be occupied, but occupied doing what? And so we want to encourage you as a part of our curriculum, we do teach on digital citizenship and we will be reinforcing it even more so since technology is so much of who we are becoming, but we wanted to put it in your ears this evening for you to begin to consider even as of tonight. Dean, I want to thank you and Reverend Knowles for your wise words of wisdom tonight. And basically to say that on the note of digital citizenship to the parents whose children that we have the information on our guidance department will contact those parents just to make them aware of what is going on with their children. And for the rest of us as parents, just be mindful and to stay connected so that you are aware of what is happening in your homes. Again, thank you to the panelists. Thank you to the tech monitors. Thank you so much parents for partnering with us this evening. And like Mrs. Hutchison Dean said, if you have any questions, please feel free to email her or your child class teacher. So thank you and have a good evening. Thank you parents. We really appreciate your time with us tonight. Okay, so again, I want to thank all of our parents, new and returning, um, for coming out tonight. If there are any questions um, regarding our Google platform technology, please feel free to send me an email, zhutchison at qccomments.com. If you have any questions that you would like to filter to administration, please feel free to email um, our primary year's heads um, as well. You can even call into the school um, and we will be happy to assist you. So I would like to wish everybody a good night. And that will be it. So good night, everyone, and have a good evening.